everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts and I have a super easy beginner's mini album. This measures eight and a half by eight and a half and our spine, I forget what we did on that, is about two and a quarter inches finished and very simple, easy came out super cute and this one uh, is a no wrap style album so it's even easier to learn on this one if you are not a beginner this is probably a really good one to do if you're getting ready you want a, a less expensive uh, albums to make for the craft fairs at the end of the year or perhaps you're selling these this would be a nice one to do so let's get into the inside I have not finished all my picture mats, but we're going to just kind of go through and see what I got going here. So here's page one, and we have a pocket, and here is a picture mat, and I have this tag. And you'll see these tags in the materials list and where to get those. And one thing about this is these tags are really great, especially if you have the smaller size photographs. You can use them to place your photos and it comes out really cute. So there's that. And then here is our magnetic waterfall. That comes down and these will flip up and places in there for you to put your photos. Alrighty, just tuck that all in there and get that back in the pocket. All right, so page two, we have a large side pocket, and I have one large picture mat in there, and I have another tag. And remember, you can always place a photo on the back too, and journal, or whatever it is that you'd like to do on some of these tags. I just wanted to do something a little different. So, yeah, very easy. This page is identical. They mirror each other, and you can place a photo here, here, and they just open up and there's a lot of places for photo placement. Um, here, you can place one here, or journal here, place a photo here. This is just a free floating picture mat I threw in there. And then over here is the same. So lots of room for just photos. I'm just gonna stick that in there and the magnet kind of holds it in. Our next page is this, and we have a fold out with a front little pocket tag and stuff. And you open this up, and there's a large pocket, and there's a place here, put your photos. And this, these pockets will accommodate very large photos, five by sevens, uh, what you got. So I just kind of did that. <clears throat> now on these pockets too, when you have your larger photos, you can slip them in this way or you can actually put them in uh, this, this way. I'm losing my voice, oh my gosh. So that is what we got there. This page we left alone. So you can just place your photo here, here, or wherever it is. Here's a photo right here for an example. Just picture placement. And if you have the longer uh, landscape ones, that look really good too. Coming to the last pages, we have two pockets here. I did not finish up my tags, but you can also slip your picture mats back behind here. So very easy to do. Over here, we have a large pocket and it's also a fold out. And I have just a couple things in there and uh, opens up picture placement all over. And this is another free floating picture mat. So very easy, this is a step-by-step, -step, start to finish, and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. So let's get started in on the materials list. Let's go over the materials list. So on this, this is a little bit different. I'm actually using two eight by eight size uh, flowers for you. 
paper packs, and they're by Stamperia, and it's just lovely. There are uh, tw 10 double-sided pages in here, and on the back of the cover, you have this beautiful print. We have this one. Isn't that pretty? This one, and I'm upside down here. This one. That one. Isn't that pretty? I think it's just gorgeous. We've got all these beautiful spring colors here. And in the back. So this is what we're going to be working with. Again, it's the 8x8 size, and we have these in our store. And you, if you're planning on making this, you may want to get this. Um, once the stock is gone, uh, we won't be replenishing it for this. Okay, we need Tyvek. You'll just need a couple strips. Tyvek, uh, we have it in uh, envelope form. You'll need a couple strips off this for the binding. And two pieces of medium weight 12 by 12 chipboard because we are going to cut this down to an eight eight and a half by eight and a half size as well as needing a piece for our spine. You may want to grab some uh, 1 8 inch wide ribbon. Um, color is of your choice. I'm just using black and you'll want some solid colored cardstock and I'm just using a very pale pastel-y uh, yellow. For the black cardstock, what I'm using is the American Crafts black uh, cardstock. It's a 12 by 12 smooth textured paper, and they they say it's a 80 pound. So we're going to use that glue. So one thing um, you're going to want, and I use the art glitter that dries clear glue. There's no glitter in it. Um, one thing you'll notice that's different that Art Glitter did, the company, is this used to be the eight, uh, four ounce size. They've now made the four ounce size looking like the two ounce, so it's long, big, and slender now. That's one thing that's new. I'll be alternating in between quarter inch and three eighths inch score tape. So if you have some leftover from another tutorial, grab it. And you'll need one pack of magnets. These manila tags, you will, uh, we have them grouped for sale for in our store. And there are, I think there's about 20 in here. And we'll be using those in this. Flowers. I'm going to use the Flower Burst White. And what they look like is this. And then you can take them off. Aren't those pretty? I thought those were really nice. And then just a couple, uh, a yard of the, uh, I think it's called the Petite Fringe, and one yard of the one inch scallop doily. And these are just beautiful uh, laces, and I really like working with them. You can see that's pretty. And this one, the little Petite Fringe, I just love this. It's so cute. Right like this. So that's all that's needed, and um, be sure to download the pre cutting um, scoring guide that is free and it also has your materials list on it. So let's get started in uh, cutting our pre cuts and then we're going to rejoin. We're going to go over our album base pre cut. And I've got my scoring board out here so that we can make sure that we made the correct cuts. And the first thing that we needed was two pieces of chipboard that were eight and a half by eight and a half. And we called these our cover. There was no scoring. We also had a chipboard spine, and that was two inch by eight and a half inches. We had two pieces of Tyvek, and they were one and a half inches by eight and one eighth inch. All right, this is where we're going to get into some of the scoring ver verifying. So I'm going to set this off to the side. 
we had three pieces of cardstock that were eight and a quarter by eight and three quarters. And we called these our inner pages. It does not matter if your scoring board starts with your zero or your one on this end or this end. You can always turn your paper around. So let me just turn this around here. So what we did was we laid this so we were eight and three quarters inch across. We scored each one at a half inch. And we labeled those inner pages. So we had three of those all scored the same. We next had a inside spine cover and this was a five by eight and a quarter. And there is no scoring on that. Next we cut two pieces that were two inch by eight and a half inch. We called these our outside hinge covers. And all we did was this was lay this on our scoring board, we're two inches across, and we scored each one of these at one inch. And we cut two pieces that were eight and a half by eight and a half. And these were just our outside cover and they are cardstock. We cut two pieces that were eight and three eighths by eight and a half, and we just called these our inside covers. And then last but not least, we had one that was cut at one and seven eighths by eight and a half, and that's our outside spine cover. And I'm going to move this out of the way really quick. And we're going to begin assembling. So the only things that we're going to need right now is, this is a no wrap style album. So what we're going to want is our chipboard covers, our chipboard spine, and we will get our little Tyvek off to the side, get it ready there. So when, when you're doing a no wrap, you can actually butt your chipboard pieces up next to each other so they are flush. And that is exactly what we're going to do. Let's grab our Tyvek. You will notice the Tyvek is slightly shorter than your chipboard, and that is perfectly fine. It's just so that none of it peeks out when we are done here. I'm going to get into my 3 8 inch score tape here. And I'll just set that off to the side. What we do on this one, we'll do the same on that. So... All I'm going to do here is line this at the edges and then fill in the middle with my score tape. And you'll want to burnish that down really good and you will want to uh, definitely want to cut off anything that is hanging over. And this one is going to overlap slightly. And I need my scissors. So I'm going to cut off any overhang here. And I'm going to burnish. Make sure that score tape's good and down. So let's do the same thing on this one. There we go. Now all we're going to do is remove the score tape and backing off one to start here. All right, let's grab our pieces here. Here's one of the covers, here is the spine. And you'll wanna make sure that you make sure they're even at the bottom and even at the top and push them together. So mine look pretty good. So I'm just gonna lay this down now on me here. And we'll burnish. Now what we'll do is we'll push this side up against that spine, make sure we're even going across the top and the bottom. We'll remove this and we will place it over that seam. And then we will burnish that down as well. I got both of mine down, got the burnishing going on. Let's grab our five by eight and a quarter piece, or eight, yeah, eight and a quarter piece. That is going to lay centered, top to bottom, so you're gonna be laying it evenly over. 
So I'm going to start filling this up with score tape. All I'm going to do is go score tape around the outside edges like a picture frame and this one is going to be completely filled in with score tape. It's very important that we do that. And the reason why is because your hinges are going to be placed on this. So I'm going to begin with, and I'm going to use my 3 8 because it's wider. And your writing is going to be the side that you put your score tape on. So I'm just going to go around my edges. Now you can tear off at the bottom. It's A lot of people like to do that. because Sometimes when you wrap around the edges like I do, you can get a little lump down there. And now we just fill in. The reason why I like to go around the edges first, kind of like a picture frame is what I say, is because then I know that all the edges are covered and there's nothing missed, so it will lay flush, it will lay down, and there's no chances of the edges lifting. Once I get this down, what I'll next do is burnish it really good. All right, I'm going to start removing the score tape backing here, and then we're going to place it. All right, here's my piece. So I'm going to make sure I have the same amount. Oh, one thing is, is check to make sure you don't have any overhang. I have some right here. So I'm going to get that off. All right. We're ready. So when you're placing this, you'll want to make sure that you have even amount of headroom of your chipboard. And just try to get this as even as possible by looking at the bottom or the top, whatever's easiest for you, and placing it. And this is the part we're burnishing. Um, you're really going to need to do that throughout this tutorial in order to keep things down and from air getting underneath and trapped. When air gets trapped underneath, uh, it dries out and then you have liftage. Alright, so we have this part down. What I want you to do is put your hand on that middle spine and slowly lift up your cover. And that's another reason why I use score tape is to avoid bubbling. So we'll just pull that up and we'll do the same with the other side. And you will see that when you use score tape on this section that there is no bubbling up. You're, you're pretty smooth there. Alrighty, let's grab the 8 and 3 8 by 8 and a half covers. Okay, so you're going to want to be 8 and 3 8 this way, 8 and a half. So if you were to lay this down and you don't want to get on your little hinge there, you can bring this all the way over to the side. Make sure you're not over the top there and it will be a nice fit in there. And same for the other side. So for this, I'm going to be using score tape. And for this, I think I'll use my quarter inch. I'm a score tape girl, but I do add glue in uh, to save on score tape sometimes too. I just want to make sure my edges don't uh, come up. So I'll lay my score tape on this side. And I'll go around the edges like a picture frame. Right on the edge without going over as best you can. I'm going to move this out of the way so I can see what I'm doing here. Now you don't have to fill this completely in with your score tape. That would be an overkill. But I am going to show you where I'm going to place my pieces. I'm going to go one down the middle. And I'm going to go, I think I'll go, let's try one on either side. I think that might be okay for what we're doing here on this. So now what you're going to do is the same exact thing on the other inside cover. That's eight and three eighths by eight and a half. So let's do that. And then we'll burnish. I'm so excited that spring is finally here. We, it's like an early spring here in uh, Washington State. Uh, I've already got flowers blooming and uh, a lot faster than it did last year. 
and I'm really anxious to get out in my garden. I already started my herb garden indoors, so they're germinating, and uh, those will be the first ones to go out as soon as we're done with any risk of uh, frost. Okay, so here's the inside of our album, and I am going to remove the score tape backing, and I'm going to place this. inside cover. Now, one thing is is that you can do, and some people do this, is you can put glue in the corners to help slide this around a bit if needed. Um, because score tape is unforgiving. Once it's down, it's down. So I'm going to line this up here, and you can always cut off uh, anything that that wants to go over the edge, but I think I'm pretty good there. But anyway, the glue, what that serves to do is in case you get it on a little bit crooked, you can kind of maneuver it a little bit before the rest of the score tape goes down. And there goes Sissy. I think I must be getting a delivery. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, I have my other side down. What we're next going, sorry about the dogs, guys. I got a delivery guy outside coming up to the door so I'm gonna click off for a minute and uh, get them under control and give them something to play with in the meantime grab your eight grab your eight and a quarter by eight and three quarter inner pages and on those score lines we're just going to fold on them and we'll use our tool to sharpen up those edges there on both of these so we have folded on those score lines of our inner pages like this. So the next thing we're going to want to do is just flop these over with the peek up and we'll grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And I'm going to move this out of the way for just a moment there. So the peek is up and we're just going to lay our 3 8 inch score tape right on that little flap we got going there. And we're going to burnish that down. We'll flip it over to make sure we don't have any score tape peeking over and we'll trim that off. And we're going to do the same thing with these. look pretty good there. Let's grab our book. Now one thing I want you to do really quick is if you pull this up you will notice you have a gap between the ledge of your inside cover and then here is the score line where we go like this. You'll also notice that we're short from the top of our cardstock here and here. And don't worry about that because we take care of that after a bit. So if you were to, here's the little hinge part, and if it was face down with the score tape facing down and you were to pull this up, you can place this, once the score tape backing off, line it up with the bottom of that, that cardstock, that's our guide, and we're going to place that right up against the little hinge area there. So we're going to do that. So I'll just pull that right up. I'm going to match it up. It's easier for me to match it up at the bottom with the other. And I'm going to place it. And that is real simple and easy. And we're going to burnish. And we'll burnish over here too. Let's grab our next one. And now it's easy. You don't have to pull up anything. We're just going to line that up with this one, the edge. We'll push it up against and just make sure that we are straight and we will burnish. And it should go in straight for you. And we got one more here. 
and we will line that up top and bottom straight with our other one and we will place it. So now when you hold up your piece here you should see that it's pretty lined up in there. And this is what the outside looks like so far. Okay, so what we're going to do next is grab our two by eight and a half inch outside hinge covers. And we are going to fold on those score lines on each one. We got a score line right down the middle on each one. Okay, before we do anything with this, I want to show you what's going to happen. We're going to hold this up. We're going to have our score tape in here, and you can dab some glue just in case you need to maneuver it. We're just going to hold that straight up and down, and this is just going to go, and you'll line it up with the top of your chipboard, and it's going to lay, and that'll cover up any of the Tyvek slipping through. So let's grab our 3 8 inch. And you see where that middle uh, crease is? We're just going to go on the right side because we'll, we'll plant some glue in the center there. That might make it easier to slip around if needed. And we're going to plant right here along the outside edge. And we can put glue in between that. We'll go just to the left of that middle crease. And then we're going to go on the outside edge. So we're going to check to make sure that our score tape is good and down by burnishing and also make sure that we do not have any score tape peeking over. So I'll just get that right on off. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. One thing about mini albums is you can design them and you can build them all different ways. I try to change it up. Um, to make it interesting and uh, so this one is a little bit different than some of my other ones and a lot of times I like to do this too to show you that there's no one way that you have to do a mini album there are some key points that you'll want to do on each one when building like placing your glue or your score tape in uh, key areas but um, Really, there's no right or wrong way to, to do these. Okay, before I place my glue, I'm going to remove the score tape backing, and then I'll get the glue down in between. I've got my glue in the places, the corners, and down that, and now we have to get right down that middle seam. Just like that, hold your album up with one hand and just kind of put that seam and the top of your cardstock right in there. Just kind of do it. Now, if you get this on wrong um, or not correctly the way it's supposed to be, remember we have things that are going to cover up this. So I have my one side down as you can see. And don't lay it out to do this because then you'll never open your album. So I got that down and all I'm going to do now, holding it with my hand firmly in this position, is press this over. Press it over and smooth it out. Okay. Once I have that, I can now kind of burnish it down. And we'll open it up in a minute, and I'll show you another thing we'll be doing. All right, I'm going to get the second one on. Get this off and get my glue on there. And I'll dot it here so I have some maneuvering time. And now I'm going to switch my album around to this way, and I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to get right in that crease and line up that cardstock with the top, and I'm going to press. 
And I'm going to let it find itself where it's supposed to be. Again, if you get this on crooked, you can always trim off anything that might pop up the top or bottom. Because we do have a cover that goes over on the top, so it won't hurt nothing. So I have that, like this. I'm holding it still, and now I'm going to press it over. All right, let's let that glue set for just a moment so it doesn't slide around. I think it's pretty good with the, the uh, thing, but make sure you don't have any glue seeping out. Now, another thing I'm gonna show you is about any of your raw chipboard edges. As soon as we get this all put together, the raw chipboard edges, sometimes what happens is, is when you're cutting it, it may gouge it a little or whatever, or perhaps you have splinters. And I'm going to show you something you can do for that, that cleans that right up. All right, so we have this. The next thing I want you to do is hold your album out. You can put your hands between, and you're going to slowly press it down. And you're going to have your fold marks. What I like to do is you can take your fingers here and you can rub them together, your nails, and pinch it down. Or what you can do is use your tool and just make sure that it is down. Go in right in a straight line there. And we'll do the same over here all the way up. And I'm going to do that over here. without damaging my cardstock. So you'll want to use, you don't want to use anything sharp for sure. Using your nails is a good one too. You just pinch your nails together and run it down the album. So once you've done that, now you can bend it back. And that, what that's going to do is loosen up those fibers on the edge. And when you open it, it's going to look good. All right, let's grab our outside cardstock covers. They're eight and a half by eight and a half. What we're going to do is we're going to apply our score tape. I've got some dust on my, my thing over there. And we're going to place this so it lines up top and bottom and the sides. And we're going to place that down. And that's just going to give us a nice uh, even coloring. So on both of these, let's grab our score tape. I think I'll use my I think I'm going to use my quarter inch again. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to go all the way around like a picture frame. And then we'll go one down the middle and we'll go two on either side for this. And I'll show you. All right. So that is what we're going to do with this one. So we're going to burnish down really good before we remove our score tape. And you may want to add glue to your corners to help maneuver. This is the outside of our album. And again, if you get a little overhead, you can always trim that off using your craft knife or your scissors, however you would like to do. And I'm going to place my first one. So here is the opening, and now I'm going to place this, and I'm going to come over here and match that up at the bottom and the sides, and get that down. Alright, I have that down now, and I'm just going to open up my book, and I'm going to burnish. So there is the outside cover. We're going to do the same with this. Let's remove our score tape and place it and burnish. So I have this down and I'm going to burnish this. All right. Now with this open, we have a 1 and 7 eighths by 8 and a half. This is just going to place right in the center there. 
So let's grab our quarter inch. We're going to go all the way around like a picture frame. And then we'll add some score tape to the center there. And this will fit right on in between your little grooves comfortably without messing it with the outside hinging area. So I think I'll go one down the middle and one on either side and we'll place this. Alrighty, our base album is complete and it looks pretty clean. It looks pretty good. We're now moving on to decorating the outside of our album. In your paper pack, you will locate this 8x8 beautiful print. And on the back, it looks like this. This is what we're going to be using for our cover. Now, you're also going to find this one and on the back it's the back page so we'll set that one off to the side so the front of our albums here are opening let's grab some score tape I'm going to use the quarter inch and I'm going to go all the way around the edges like a picture frame and then we will place some score tape in the inside of this and I'll show you in just a second what we're going to do here And, and we'll cut off any score tape that is peeking over the edges for sure because it will show up. Okay, so we're going to go one down the middle. And I think we're going to go two on each, each side of that middle point here. We do have some flowers. And just to make sure that nothing kind of bubbles up on us, we'll burnish this down and clip off any overhang for sure. And get that done. So I'm going to remove the score tape backing really quick and place this. This is such a simple, easy, and quicker album to make. And there's no die cutting, no trim punch added or anything. If you'd like to, though, you're more than welcome to. Um, so what we're going to do is when we lay this down, you've got these butterflies down here, you have some to the side, and these two up top. So you may want to put some glue on your corners in case you need to maneuver this. But what we're going to do is center this right on in there, trying to leave the same amount of black top and bottom and to the sides. So it may be easier if you do use the glue so you can maneuver it around. So I'm going to open this up now and I'm going to burnish really good. Especially if you wrap around the edges like I do, get those corners really good. Make sure that those are down. All right, so let's start with this piece. And we're going to need our scissors for this. We are going to need one more piece to the puzzle here. But let's just start off with this. So down here you're going to see there is this bird and we're going to cut out and around this as best you can. And I'm trying to keep this all in one cut piece here. We'll just keep going down here around him and then we'll come right over here and we'll follow it along so just like that stick this off to the side for just a moment 
and I'm going to cut this way, getting that flower in there. Just do the best you can getting around these is all. So that is what I have. There's one piece. Okay, the next thing we're going to come up here. You see this? We're just going to fussy cut around this and we're going to leave uh, we're going to leave this part flat. So you don't have to be perfect. It's just for some extra little color. I'm definitely not going to be perfect about it. So I think once I get down to this part at the bottom, I'm just going to cut this straight over and start working myself up this way. So here's what mine looks like. Okay, this scrap piece, it may seem like it may not be used, but you never know, we may. So stick this off to the side into a scrap pile. The scrap pile is called our reserves. Any leftover cuttings from our decorated paper is gonna go in its own little reserve pile so that we can reserve it for something else that we may need it for. We're also gonna do that with any leftover black cardstock. We'll have our own little thing there. <clears throat> okay, let's start with this piece, and I am not going to back this with any black. It's just going to go right on down. So I'm going to add some glue here, and right here next to where the butterfly is, I'm going to bring this all the way to the top of the black chipboard, matching it up, just like that. Alrighty, now what we're going to do is we're just going to come up along the side of World, leave that little border. We'll come just to the top of where those buttons are so that we can use what we need. We'll cut off here. So cut that part off. This we're going to stick in our reserves. We're going to cut along the top of to the world like this put this in our reserves and now we have three buttons we're going to cut out and around each one of these I hear a dog barking that is not mine that's our back neighbor's dog he is uh, I knew that was going to start. <laughs> they can hear him too. Oh goodness. I may have to pause the video for a bit to get them occupied again. <laughs> Once one goes off, the others do. It's quite comical. I think I got them pretty well occupied for a bit with the chew toy. So your three buttons. This is what we're going to do here. We're going to apply some glue. And right over here, we're just going to come down. See where the little frame is there? We'll just put one there. We'll grab our next one. We'll put that one here. And we will grab this last one here. and we will stick it right here. Okay, the bird's set off to the side. We're gonna get into our paper pack. There is a page in here that has some cut parts, and it's this one. We're actually gonna stick this on our paper cutter so we can get a nice and true straight line. So looking at your paper like this, where it's sideways, because I always tell you to start over here and measure over or do like that. I try to do that so that it stays consistent. That way I'm not telling you to measure down, over, up, and all that. So when you put this on your paper cutter, you're gonna uh, come on over to where you see the top of the blue frame, and we're just gonna cut that right on down. And I'm gonna show you mine. Do that real quick. 
these two pieces can go back in our reserve. Now all we have to do is cut out and around each one of these, leaving the green and the blue frame. So I'm going to do that really quick. Any leftover pieces, please put into your reserve, even if they're just very itty bitty tiny, because you never know, we may need those. And they're a good size that we may end up using some of those, the top and the bottom of our middle spine on the inside. Okay, next thing you're going to want to do is grab some black cardstock, and I'm going to give you the measurement really quick here. So cut two pieces of your black cardstock, that is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. We're going to apply glue to the back, and we are going to center it in there, leaving ourselves a black border on each one, and then we're going to burnish that down really good. So let's do that. I think by framing these pieces in black, it will really separate our colors and make them pop out a little more. So I, I think that is what I want to do here. There's one, and I'm going to burnish that in just a moment. Get that one on there. We'll wipe up if we have any glue that squirts out the side for sure. I see that I do right here. Get that out of there. Let's grab our album. So the first one we're going to lay down is this one and it's going to be at an angle and we'll have the blue up towards the right hand corner there and then this one's going to overlap and it will be straight, almost in the middle there, just like that, and I like that. So this piece will kind of come up a little bit on that one. So I'm going to go with this, placing that down at an angle, and one needs to come up just a little bit and then I'll be happy with that. So we have some color over there and it's on there pretty straight and down. And glue is the better choice so you can make sure that you get that the way you want it. So that looks really good to me. Now what we're going to do is take our bird and we're going to glue it right like this. We'll get the flowers on in just a bit. We'll do the back first and then we can. So this, I'm just going to bring him up. His beak is right under the, the uh, T in two. And he just lays right like that. Very simple. And that looks really good. All right, let's flip this over and get our paper for the back side. In your second paper pack, you will find another one of these. And on the flip side, it is this. So we're going to apply our quarter inch score tape. We'll go all the way around like a picture frame. We'll then put one down the center. And then what we can do is one on either side of that. And if we want to put a little bit of glue, we can in between there to fill it in. But we won't be having embellishments hanging off this like the flowers or anything. So I think it'll be just fine doing it that way. <clears throat> Whoops. So let's get the score tape backing off. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Oh my gosh.
and we'll just put a little in between. I think that'll be fine. Okay, so make sure your thing is going the right way. Here's the front. We'll just flip it over. And these two are at the top. These are again at the bottom. And we are going to center that, trying to leave the same amount of black cardstock frame around there. Just do the best you can. And if you need to put a little bit of your glue to help out, do so. <clears throat> I do need to go grab something like a cup of coffee <laughs> for my throat. Um, I seem to be losing my voice. A little scratchy. And it is coffee time again for me. So I think that looks good. We got the front and the back, same papers, and they are matching. And what I think we're going to do, I think this would be a great idea for using up some of this. And we can layer. So this piece is short, we had cut it off. What I'd like you to do is put this on your paper cutter and cut just to the right of this little trim piece here. And I'll show you. And we're gonna layer in and we're gonna be using this. So now if you were to lay this, we're gonna do what's called measure to fit. And we are going to bring it down so it matches the top of the front there. And we will leave a little bit of a black border. Grab your pencil and mark it over here where you need to trim. And now I'm just going to trim down this side. And do that really quick. And it's always best to use your paper cutter and stuff like this to get a straight line. <clears throat> so now let's see how this looks. So if I place this there, we are going to be short down here, but like I said, we're going to be layering in. So this should also be almost the same as what we need to do. So I think in order to line up this with that, we're going to put this on our paper cutter and cut all the way down. And so it matches up right. Okay. So the, now our trim is going to match up. Let's just put this right on down there. I'm going to lay this over my piece so my trim is matching up. I'm going to come over to the side, make a pencil mark where this needs to be trimmed. And I'm going to cut that. So now I know that this is going to be the same. I'm just going to hold this up. And what I was thinking about doing here, because this has to match up with the side, is to place this down. And I'm just going to cut straight across the top. There'll be a little seam, but that's okay, because we can do something about that. So let's take a look how that's going to look. I think that'll look really good, and then I have something for us to put right here. So I'm going to lay this out so I can kind of see where I'm at here. And the first piece I'm going to place is this one. And I think I will use glue for this one. I think it's going to be a lot easier to line up. So I'll try to keep it even with these in between where I'm at. And you'll definitely want to open up your book so you can get in between those little areas. And then what you can do is if you have to push it over or maneuver it a little bit more, you can just kind of tuck it up against that. Okay, it's time for this. As you can see, we use quite a bit of scraps in these tutorials. I'm going to bring this up so it matches up with the bottom. And I'm going to place that. Wipe up any glue for sure that I don't need poking out. Okay, so you should have this piece in your reserves. And we are going to go cut out the bow. So I think we'll just kind of 
cut straight across underneath the bow in the buttons there. And we'll cut out the little bow. And now another distraction. I got my Roomba going. Okay, the bow's going to go right there where the seam is. And that will help get some of that seam area to not show. So right on there. In the middle. And these little buttons here. We're going to be placing these on the back. There's three up front. We'll put two in the back. And they don't have to be exactly a circle because they're not I don't think that they're really uh, done in exact circles. So I'll place one here and I'll place one up here and I'm going to stick all of this back in my reserves and now I'm going to open this up and take a look and make sure this is burnished down pretty good. Now, if you get outside like mine did right here on the outside when I put it down, and I am just going to use that to cover that up. So don't be afraid to use your uh, Sharpies and little things to cover up anything that uh, Seems like it's imperfect. And that's good enough for me. So there's the back, there's the spine, and there's the cover. Let's grab, where did my flowers go? Here they are. Sometimes these will just pop right on off. I am going to place these like this and one like this so the bird doesn't get totally covered up but it has just enough flowers. So you can use your glue or if you have a hot glue gun, uh, whatever it is. I like quick tacking with my hot glue gun because I don't have to wait for that to dry. So I think I'm going to get that out. Uh, doesn't look like I can right now because it's not heated up. So we're just going to put some glue and I'll just let this dry. Bring those in. And bring that in. And I'm going to let that dry. And I think that looks really good. So right now I'm just kind of playing around to see what I would like to do. And I think I want to go with it kind of like this. I think that would look good. So I'm going to grab some glue here and just place them. I like that. That looks really good. Grab some of your one inch, I, this is the scallop doily I believe we call it, and we're just going to clip a piece that will fit across the bottom. Now one thing is <clears throat> you'll want to make sure your sides are the cut of the fabric is straight. But I want to show you something I've been trying out, and we did bring it into the store because I have not had any problems with it, but I like it a little bit more than the Art Glitter Glue when it comes to fabric. And the reason why, this is clear, it's the Beacon Fabric Tack Permanent Adhesive. It works really good. It's a thicker uh, glue that works wonderful with laces. Uh, this will hold it 
for sure. But if you are used to using this and putting it on lace, you do know that the lace will absorb a lot of the glue first and you might have to re-add. So this is something that's new in my uh, store and I definitely uh, recommend if you don't have this to try it out. And I think my lace goes like this. So I'm going to use it here. It's a lot quicker to grab. So I'm going to line it up there and there. If you have a little binder clip, you might want to clip it off to the side. But as you can see, it's already starting to grab my fabric, and I'm stretching my fabric some too. So make sure that that's straight on there. So that is already grabbing, guys. I think that looks really good. I'm going to clip another piece and glue this side down up here. So right along here, look good. And this one's going to come down uh, a little bit more. So this one has just a little bit down here. This one's going to come down just a little bit more. You'll be able to see your wings. And we'll just kind of press that down a little. And I think that looks really good. And I hope you like it too. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I've been trying it out and I like it and it works really good. So our cover is complete. Now one thing is you can do, if you have some flat back pearls like the domed ones, I think that would look really pretty going across. But I wanted to minimize the uh, amount of money uh, put into this album and so I kept it pretty simple. So really quick, I'm gonna show you about the edges that I mentioned earlier. Uh, sometimes when you're cutting chipboard, uh, you don't really get a real clean cut and there might be like some shards or something. What you can do is grab a nail file. And don't use the very rough side. What you're gonna wanna do is like the buffer side. And what you'll do is wherever it is, you'll go one direction and that will help. And then if you have any of the black, the, uh, the covering of the uh, chipboard that's showing, what you can do is then take some black ink and just kind of go along the edge and that'll cover it right on up. If you don't have black ink, uh, a black Sharpie with a thicker tip would help. So that is just a tip for when you're doing the no wrap style and you get a little bit uh, rough on the edge. We are done with this. I think it looks great. Let's move on to page one. We're on page one and we're going to go over our pre-cuts for that page. But I did want to say that when you open up your book, page one is the inside cover. Page two is your first page. Three, four, five, six, and so on. It's like reading a book. That way you can identify what page you're on in case you need to pause the video, go do something, and when you come back, if YouTube doesn't bring you back to where you left off, you'll know what page you're on and you can find that by scrolling through the video. Okay, pre-cuts. Let's go over them. So what I had you cut was five pieces of black cardstock that were four and a quarter by four and three quarter. And what we did was we placed this on our scoring board. And again, it doesn't matter if your scoring starts here with your one or over here. You can always turn your, your paper to be the right way. So all we did was we laid this so we were four and three quarters inch across and we scored each one at a half inch. And that's all there was to these five pieces. And we labeled that page one WF, and WF represents waterfall. The next thing we cut was a one and a half by five inch. We called it our strap. We laid this on our scoring board, we're five inches across, and we scored it at a half inch. 
The last piece is a three and a half by four and a quarter, and we labeled this a pocket. So what we first did was we laid this so we were three and a half inches across. We scored it at a half inch. We then turned our paper so we are now four and a quarter inch across. We scored it at a half inch and three and three quarters inch. So we're all set to go. What we're going to do is in your paper pack, um, and you might want to open up both of them and kind of merge your papers in. That's what I did. You'll find this print, and on the back it looks like that. This is going to be our base decorative page for page one. Let's grab our pocket, our three and a half, and we're going to need some scissors. So we have our scoring lines on the side and the bottom. In the corner, you'll notice it makes a square. So we're just going to cut up on that bottom score line. We'll come across and clip out those corners on each side. All right, let's fold on those score lines. Let's grab some glue to start. And what we're gonna do is just kind of fold in the sides there. And right down here in the corners, we're just gonna dab a little bit of glue because this is gonna come over. Do not get glue anywhere down here past where these little ledges fall. So, and you really don't need that much. We'll just place that. Oh, that was an ant. How did that get in here? Time for the vinegar solution. We had a very mild uh, winter here, so we're going to be this summer having a big problem uh, with insects, I can see. So it's time to uh, have the sprayer come out. I don't like insects and it's rare that we get them and uh, but uh, this year uh, from what we're told we're gonna have a, a lot of them since we didn't get real bad freezes or any snow like we should have. So here's the sides with my 3 8 inch score tape. And what I did was I laid it so it was at the edge of here, all the way down. And then I'll lay it here so it goes along the edge, top edge of this without going over. And we'll burnish that. Okay, so where we're going to place this is right over here, but we're going to wait um, to place this. So we'll just set that off to the side. <clears throat> what I'd like you to get is your five pieces that are the WF. And all we're going to do with that is fold on those score lines. All right, so with the peaks up, what we're going to do is grab our 3 8 inch score tape. And right here on that flap, we're just going to lay our score tape right in the middle coming down without getting it on the score line. And we're going to do that with each one of these. All right. So I look pretty good on this. I'm going to trim up some of the overhang that I might see. Definitely got it over here. That one's good. This one needs it. And I think I'm good over there. So let's take a moment and make sure that the score tape is good and down and we got all the air out from underneath it. And then I'm going to show you first how this is going to place so that you don't get one over too far than the other and then not be able to fit it. So our waterfall is going to be coming down this way. If you were just to place this down and leave yourself about an eighth of an inch of your paper showing, this pocket, the opening at the top, will fit right in here with an eighth of an inch from the side, as you can see. So that is why I wanted you to wait before we place the pocket. So now you know where that pocket's supposed to sit. 
and all I'm going to do is draw a little pencil line off to the side, so my little marker, and we're going to place these. The first thing I would like us to do is make a pencil mark and from the bottom of your page measure up five eighths of an inch. Just kind of make a little pencil line there. We are ready to start placing these. So what's going to happen is I'm going to remove the score tape. I'm going to push this back so that the sticky will be on the back. I'm going to move in 1 8 inch from the side and where that line is I'm going to place it watching to make sure that I'm straight along the side and I'm going to place this. So I like to start with the bottom, it's always easier. So here we go. Here's my line and I'll erase that in a moment. Just watching the sides to make sure I'm straight. And it's down. And I'll erase this little line here. And once it's down, we'll burnish that. Really good. Let's grab another one. And this is real easy. Remember how we did the hinging for our pages? It's kind of the same thing. So the sticky is going to go back behind, sticky down, and I'm going to match it up with the sides of this one and push it right up against. And that helps to keep straight. Let's go with our next one. Same thing. Line it up and press it down. And we'll keep doing this until they're all placed. And the last one. Now one thing is, is we're going to verify to make sure that our strap is still going to fit, or at least come up enough. So grab your strap, and on that little score line, we're going to pinch it. If we have to make one that's uh, longer, we can. We're just going to take that and wrap that back behind. And that should give us at least a good two inches. And I think that that's a good height. We don't need to cut a different one. That's going to be just fine for us. So what we're going to do at this point is just set this off to the side. We'll get to that in a moment. But let's grab our pocket now. If you were to hold that down flat and place it, again, you will be able to line this up with the bottom of this one and have about an eighth of an inch over here. So let's place this. So again, the opening's up here. It has no sticky. I'm going to hold this down so I can see where that bottom one falls. And I made a little line over here. And I'm just going to try and keep this as straight as I can. And even with the bottom of this one. And that looks like it works pretty good. Now let's get that flap on. So we've folded it. We can hook it back behind here. And we want to make sure that when we hook it back behind, we're, we're kind of straight in there. And uh, that looks pretty straight and even side to side right there. And I know it's kind of hard for you to see black on black, so I'll lift this up here. You just want to make sure that you are somewhere in the in the in between there. So once you have it where it needs to be, as you can see, we're going to pinch it down below so it does not slide. And we're going to put our hand down firmly here so it doesn't slide again. And we'll just lift that little flap back. And whoops 
put some glue on there and I don't quite need that much and we will press and burnish that down. Now sometimes when you get a lot of glue like that it's going to try to seep out just like this. This is where you need to open up and get that glue out of there so it doesn't glue your thing down. All right, pocket, we got this, we got that. We are going to start covering with some decorated paper and then we will plant our magnet here and here. But let's get into our paper for over here. And, oh, really quick, the manila. You're gonna want one of those for this page. And I'm not sure if I said what size it was, but it is about three and one eighth by about six and a quarter inch. And you should be able to slide that right on in your pocket perfectly, like that. So, all right, so first things first, let's get something to cover this. All righty, in your reserves, you should have this piece. Looks like that. What I'd like you to do is, if you hand cut this at all, we need to straighten it up without coming down any farther. I think this will make a nice piece with giving us our black little lip. So I'm gonna stick this on my paper cutter and just make sure that that is a straight cut across. And that's all I did. Nothing else needs to be done except for to lay this down on your pocket and bring it all the way to the bottom and if you need to trim up your bottom, it looks like I need to, you can do so. Just put it there, find it, and trim it. So now this should be pretty well straight. And it is. So one thing about this piece here from your reserves is it's going to be too wide. So what I like to do is what's called measure to fit. So I'm going to place this down and try to have even amount of this overhanging off each side of that black pocket. And once I think I have that there pretty even, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark it right where the edge of that black cardstock is on each side. And then I'm just going to trim this. So I'm going to do that really quick. And now I'm going to check to make sure that it's going to fit. And I can place it down and it fits uh, very nicely. So that's what I'm going to do. And I can see some pencil mark and if you can too, just erase it. We are going to apply our glue, and you might want to get your magnets handy there. We'll bring it down to the bottom of the pocket, to the side, and that looks pretty straight to me, and we'll just burnish that. All right, magnets. I am going to get into my magnets now. And I'll grab a plus and a minus. Come back here. All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is place a magnet here. And I'll just grab a plus. Now, when you place this magnet, the sticky side down, come in about three quarters of an inch or so and place it centered in there. Now what you can do is, you see your mate, just stick it right on top. Oops. And we will take off that little adhesive. Now this is important. Give this just a slight little bend and then press that down. Make sure your paper's all the way down. And then what you do is you just let it fall and press. And then what you can do is carefully lift that up and your magnet is placed. Okay, let's get our piece for right here. In your reserves you will find this. And what we're going to do is we are going to cut it right here where the pink meets the cream. We want the cream border around there. So we'll put this on our paper cutter and we will cut all the way down this way. And I'm going to show you mine. Do that real quick. 
So this is what I have. This piece should fit fairly well in here, giving us a black border, and it does. And I'm going to slip this right underneath here so you can kind of see. I'll have my black borders on the side, a little here, a little here. So now we're just going to glue this down. Centering that side to side, as best we can anyway, and pressing. And I'll clean up any glue that I might have, squirting out. Okay, so there is our first one. In your paper pack, you should have this piece. On the back, it looks like this. We're going to look at it like this. We're going to start over here. We're going to measure over four inches and we're going to cut that right down the middle. I'm going to do that really quick. Now, because we are conserving paper, um, we're not going to be uh, filling this whole thing. We're going to leave some black in here. And uh, we can always go back with a solid color cardstock and add to it or, or whatever you want to do. So what we're going to do is turn our paper so we're looking at it like this. We're going to measure over a half inch and cut. And we're going to keep measuring over a half inch and cutting until we have a total of nine half inch strips. So let's do that really quick. I have my nine strips here, and this is what's left over. Let's go ahead and put this in our reserves for right now. Now one thing that we can do is alternate. So I'm going to slip this back behind. I'm going to flip that one up for right now. I'm going to slide this back behind our next one so you can see what I'm doing. This half inch strip will place right here evenly, side to side and we're going to glue that down. And here's, here's something I w wanted to tell you that we can do, is we can alternate from the polka dots to the rows on each one of these. The polka dots and another greenery there. So we can keep alternating. You can pick the best ones that you want to pick. For instance, I might want to put this one right here with more green since there's green down here. So they're going to go on there. Let's do this together. Here's our first one. And we'll put some glue on there. And we will place it. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a black border at the bottom. But most importantly, I'm trying to get that centered side to side there so that it kind of matches up with the one in front on top. So by putting this underneath, it's easier to make sure that you can see what you're doing. So those two are done. Slide it back behind here, and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to have the roses and the greenery up. And just leave a little bit of a black lip down there. And while my glue is still wet, I'll just bring that down and make sure I match up pretty good with that one. So, so far that's what we have. And then the next one would be a polka dot. And all we're going to do is keep doing this um, until we're done. It's kind of fun if we if I don't cut that out. I mean, you know, it's kind of like we're all crafting together in the room anyway. So it's kind of fun for me. So that's what we have. And then we have this one. And I think we have enough strips here. If we don't, we'll cut more, but. Okay, so let's take a look. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna flip these up now. 
And it doesn't matter however you want to start this, whether you want to start it like this or, or the other way. Some of these have uh, some partial letters, and that's fine. So I'm going to slip this back behind my bottom one so I can see what I'm doing. Leave a little bit of a black. And then the next one will be some color. So we're just going to kind of keep going here with this. All right, so we've got, we've got all that down. That looks pretty good. So one thing is, is I did grab a photograph for a reference here. And this is the with the little white border on there. It's about two and five eighths by three and three eighths. So one of these would fit nicely right on in there. You can even put these off at an angle, maybe uh, put a little journaling tag, center it, bring it over to the side, journal here, maybe this one over here and journal here. But um, I thought that that would be good for these smaller ones. And I know a lot of you don't have that smaller, you have a little bit bigger. So that's what we have. So let's try the magnet and that should hold it down if we press this down because it's going to go in the book flat. All right, let's grab this piece. And what we're going to do with this is in your reserves you will have this piece. And again, we are about, I think we were like, what, three and one eighth inch across. So for this, what I would like us to do is we're going to measure over two and seven eighths inch and cut. So here's this, and you'll notice you'll have the cream border. Now if you want to ink around the edges with some black, you can do that to um, blend in more black here. But I wanted to use these because they're great for planning a photo. So I'm just going to go around this. I didn't call for this in the materials list. Most everyone has some black ink or can get their hands on some. Um, but it's not necessary. It'll still look good. So I'm just going to run it around the edges here. Just like that. So that you can kind of see that there's some black there. All right, and you can also do it on this if you want. We need to cut this down, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure to fit. So place your piece here so that you have even amount of your manila hanging out the back there. So it kinda looks like this, even, even. And I'm bringing this up just underneath this. And I'm gonna place this down and I'm going to come up from the bottom about the same distance that's over on the sides from the bottom there. And I'm going to make a pencil mark. And now I am going to cut that. And that is what I call measuring to fit. All right. So again, if you would like to use this to go around or even go thicker around, you can. Let's add some glue. And we're not quite done with this one yet. And we're going to place this. Alrighty, grab some of your petite French, that really pretty lace, and we're going to measure to go side to side. I love working with lace, it's so much fun. We'll just cut a piece. And I think I got a good enough piece there. That looks good. That is the, I can't tell. They're both sides are pretty. I think that's the one that goes up. So I'm going to glue this down side to side. And we still have this to take care of, which is perfect because we have this. But I think I want to get us something that's a little bit wider than that, definitely. All right, so 
we have this in our reserves, Give Love. Let's cut out and around it. Now one thing is, is you don't even have to put anything on this. You can just slap your photo right down. I like decorated paper or solid colored cardstock. And um, this I'm going to place right down here. But actually, what I'd like to do first is grab some black cardstock from my scraps. And I'm going to mount this to where I have a black border going around. I'm going to glue it down to that first. I am so sorry. <clears throat> so now I have this backed with the black card so card stock, and I'm going to place this down right like this. But when I apply glue, all I'm going to do is glue down at the bottom so that this can be a lip to get your photo slid back behind. Okay, time for me to take a break, and it's coffee time, like I said, so I'm going to go get me a cup of coffee and <clears throat> take, care of, take care of business. So I think we get to crafting quiet now. Um, I think she's done with her alerting me that someone's taking a walk outside, but this is what I have, and I can still get a photo tucked right back behind if I wanted to, even placing one right on in there just slightly would look good. Okay, so we have that. I just cut some of my black ribbon and you you can do this any way you want. I just kind of go through like this or you can just tie it and uh, there are my tails and that can go right on in there into my pocket. Okay, it's time to get for this. And I think what I would like to do is in your paper pack you will have another one of these. What I'd like you to do is measure over one and three-eighths inch and cut. So you have a choice. You can go with it like this or you can go with it like this. And for me, I'm going to go with the polka dots to, for, so that there's not so much. So the first thing we want to do is just lay it down. Make sure you have your black border. We're going to measure to fit. Make a pencil mark, and now we're going to cut across. Now, one thing that we can do, rather than leave it squared, is actually create a kind of like a point, like this. And I think that would look really good. So, what I think I'm going to do is, because I don't want to come down too low, but I think if I come down... I'm going to come down one inch approximately or three three quarters and I'm going to cut at an angle. Now when you cut keep this piece because that's your pattern you're going to flip it over to the other side and match up the corner up there and now this will ensure you get the same cut you have over there. At least it helps. Okay, so when I put this down, it'll be like this, and then all I have to do is trim. Now watch for your magnet, okay? If you need to go thicker, do so. so. Definitely check your magnet, though, before you cut, and just center that. I think that's pretty centered. And now I'm just going to cut, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this, just real easy. Cut there, and cut here. All done. And then that way, it's not so squared off. But as you can see, there's still plenty of room if I wanted to go and lay something over it. And I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it as is. So, and I think that looks really good, actually. 
So this page is complete. What we're going to do is we're going to place this in our book after we complete page two. So we're going to flip it over. Let's grab our quarter inch score tape. And we are going to go around the outside edges like a picture frame. You'll want to burnish really good. We're going to set this off to the side now that we have this ready to go. And I'll explain why I like to do page two, lay it in our book before page one when we get to that point. So we are complete. Let's move on to page two. Page two, all right. So page two has a two and a half by nine inch piece. We call this our side pocket. There is no scoring. In your paper pack, you'll locate this piece or this page. And it looks like this. This is our base page. And what we're gonna do is look at it so that our flowers are off to the right. This is a different style pocket and you can do this two ways. But first let's grab our quarter inch score tape and we are going to line the left hand side with our score tape. And we're gonna burnish that really good and make sure that air is out. Okay, there's two ways to do this. We're gonna remove the score tape backing. And what you will do is lay this down right to the edge, making sure you have equal overhang of black. You will burnish that down and then wrap these flaps to the back and tack them down. Now another way, and we'll be doing that together, another way is to grab your scoring board and instead of wrapping it by hand, what you can do is place your piece up against your board Lay this piece like you would normally with the equal overhang. Bring it all the way to the edge so you can see I'm pretty equal there. Now just to the right of the decorative paper, find a slot in your scoring board and score. Now don't move it unless you can move it all together so you don't lose that spot there. Okay. So I'm going to come over here, and it looks like I'm pretty good lined up. I don't have to really move anything. And I'm going to go like that. Now my piece has to where it's easier to wrap. Okay, so let's do this together, whether you use the scoring board or not. Because most of the time, I just wrap by hand. And we will do that. Now I'm going to turn this because it's easier for me without getting my head in the video. My sticky is here. And you'll want to make sure your roses, of course, are there. I'm just going to give a little bend. And now I'm going to bring this down, watching where those score lines are. They should be outside the edge of my paper. Pretty even there. I'm going to press in the middle and press out. And then I'm going to use my tool to make sure that that gets down really good. So that's all there is to it. Wrap these back behind. If you got your lineup a little off, that's okay. You just we're just going to whoa. We're just going to recrease over there. Wow, that really came out. I think there's something wrong with my nozzle. I did not grab that very hard or squeeze it very hard. So clean that up really quick. So over here just make sure you're wrapped pretty good and around. And we'll burnish that down. Okay, so here is our side pocket. The next thing I'd like you to do is to look in your reserves or your scrap piles and locate this piece. On the back it says, give love to the world. Okay, it is approximately, where did my ruler go? It is about six and five eighths by eight inches. It's the only one in your your uh, reserves that looks like this. So what we're going to do is we are going to lay it down to where we're going to do a measure to fit on this. So 
lay this side of your paper down and you can leave yourself a little bit of a black border down here and here because we're eight inches a little here now look over here take your pencil and let's just make a mark where we will need to cut so that we can cover this so I have mine and I'm going to make that cut really quick Put the other piece so that's what I have I'm gonna apply glue to this side and I am going to place it leaving my black border over here so I'm gonna do that really quick I think I'm gonna boil my after this tutorial I'm gonna boil that nozzle see if that helps all right I just want to make sure I'm pretty even there. Okay, so in your paper pack, you will find this. So what we're going to do, and on the back it looks like this, it's from our other one. We're going to clip out this guy out. So I'm just going to come up without getting on those buttons, just enough to come over And I think I'm going to fussy cut this little guy out. And I'll show you what I have left. I'm going to try and get some of this greenery and stuff. So give me a moment and then I will show you what I did. So this is what I ended up doing. More of a sloppy cut, but I did fussy cut around it. Kind of sloppy, but I, that was the best I could do. I'm going to glue this down right here. To give this page just a little more character and color to balance that out and I'll stick it over here without going over the left hand side and just place it all right let's see what else do I got going on here I'm gonna make a quick little bow and cut those tails down just a little bit more. That will look really good. So once I have that, let's grab some of our lace. Now the lace, we're going to stick right off to the side. It's going to overlap some of the bird, but that's okay. We still get what we're looking for. Let that dry, and right down here, that's where I want it. And I'm going to use this glue and just kind of stick it right here. That's where I think I want it. So once you have this all glued down and everything is dry, we're going to flip this over. We're going to put score tape around the outside like a picture frame, one down the middle, and I think one on either side will be plenty. We will burnish it, and then we are going to stick this in our book together. Alrighty, so here is page two, and here's the back. So remember when I said we're going to plant this one before we do page one? And the reason why is if you notice your chipboard inner cover is slightly larger than your inner page. So if we plant this one and center it on the page, then it's easier to line this one up. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to remove the score tape, but I'm also going to grab something uh, let's see, what do I have here that isn't black? I think I'll grab two of these just to stick back behind so you can see better rather than the black all bleeding through with the other the uh, pages behind it. So I'm going to get this ready to go. Now when I plant this, one thing I'm going to do is you see where your crease is right here, your hinge? This is where you are going to steer clear of that. And I'm going to show you. You will want to keep a spacing away from it. 
this page is going to plant like this. So before I stick it, I'm going to kind of show it. I'm going to kind of stick this over a little bit. What you're going to do is you're going to have at least 1 8 to 3 16 inch away. And so it's kind of hard with the for you to see, I think, with the, the lace and the black over here. But I'm going to show you. You're going to be centering this top and bottom. Leave yourself a little bit of a black border over here and press. And I'll bring this up so you can see a little bit better. Get that down really good. All right, so oh, we may need to see that. You can see over here to the right, and you can see that I'm away from that hinge about 1 8 inch 3 16 just about so that is our goal now let's get our cover now when we do this when we remove the score tape watch that crease right here because you're going to steer clear away from this side your hinge of your cover and you're going to want to try and keep this, the bottom of this kind of lined up with the bottom of your page over there. But you're going to center this on inside your cover. So first what you might want to do is lay yours down with the score tape on the back so you can kind of look to see how it looks. And then you can remove your score tape backing. Now again, some people uh, might want to put a little glue in the corners at the top of their paper so they can maneuver it a little until they're straight and then press down. So again, I'm watching where that hinge is and making sure that I am somewhat even around here. Trying to stay even with the bottom of that other page. And I don't want to get my head in the video, but I think this might be pretty good, right there. I could have gotten a little even better, but that's how it went. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up these and kind of make sure that this gets down. Alrighty, we got page one, page two. Let's work on a tag for this page really quick. We'll slip it in there. I think I would like to do that. We're going to go with this. So what I would like you to do is take this piece, lay it down underneath up here if you have the tags, and we're just going to measure to fit. So I'm going to leave a little border, and I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to make sure that I cut this to fit. So my first cut will be the long way, and then I will cut it the other way. So there's that. And I will bring it down. Cut it that way. Now you have a choice. You can go with the polka dots, which is very cute, and do like what you did on the others. But I'm going to go with it like this. And if you have that petite fringe lace or your smaller lace handy, grab it. Here it is. Make a cut there and I'm going to glue that down. And then this time, I think, I'm just going to tie it right here in the front. Get my book. And it will slip right on in that pocket. And of course, at the end of the tutorial, you'll want to do some picture mats and stuff. But Alrighty, we are now on to page three.